that, is that how we start these? Is that how it stays? You gotta yeah. do it yes, now. Yes, that's how it no, Hey guys. Since hey guys. Okay, so the Dodge build's still in progress, but I, I daily drive it. We still take it on trips, even though the camper's not finished. And it's kind of nice because you can get a good idea of where you want cabinets to be or lighting and different stuff like that. So uh, no matter what, even when it was just a, a shell on the back before we added the extra top, we were taking trips with it. And uh, you got water dripping in your window over there, Stace. It reminds me, we need to put rain gutters on the outside and the, the overhangs. Thing. Yeah, it's a little things, but uh, <laughs> hey, at least the this dogs. Is why we drive it. Yeah, at least the dogs get water. That's pretty know. good. So anyway, add that to the list. Drip edge along the side of the camper. But in this video, we're going to show some trip footage uh, that we've been on recently, and and stick around, enjoy. There's that drip. No, I'm trying to get the dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> West coast, best coast. So we'll do like a quick walk around of some of the compartments. This is going to be side access. This whole section is going to get cut out and we've got a set of aluminum stairs that are going to fold down. So we'll have a side door. If a motorcycle's on the back, uh, we can just go in and out of the side door without having to drop the bike and move the spare tire carrier when that goes on. But right now it's got some tools and some clothing and some stuff up above. We'll head over to this. Tools are in here. Not much to see, just some toolboxes and uh, it's a multiple layer section. So I can pretty much store everything I need in that. Uh, this side always ends up working out to be wood storage and things like that. Fishing poles, an old air filter. The coveralls, those came in handy recently when we patched that, <laughs> that <laughs> leak and transmission leak. Uh, just odds and ends, extra fluids. I've got some oils and stuff like that. Inside, just living space. We got a bunch of bicycles back there right now. Back here is my battery setup. So this is where the battery isolator sits. This has worked out really good. So until we do solar, we're just gonna have our run our isolator and that basically charges the camper battery within the first 10 minutes we're on the road off of the alternator. So, I mean, it's, it's coming 6BT. It's like running a giant generator or something. And this is important. This is the bocce ball set. Pretty, it's pretty haggard. One thing to remember if you do put a battery isolator in your vehicle, uh, I, I have this one fused at both ends because you've got lots of amperage from both sides because it's tied into the main camper battery. And if you get a chafe along the wiring one way or the other, you want it to be able to isolate from one side or the other so you don't, so you don't catch your truck on fire. And that's worth the extra 10 bucks it takes to put those fuses in there. In this compartment, this is where we'll keep cooking stuff. I got a camp stove and things like that until we build the actual kitchen area in the camper. We got some of these MREs that Stacy's brother brought back from the military. This is just like a backup snack if we just need need something. It's just always in here. They last forever. Other random snacks we got. Oh, this is important. The cast iron little Joffler sandwich cooker. You can cook whatever. Trail tools because I use this when we're out uh, making motorcycle trails and working on stuff. I don't know stuff. Apples. We got apples. And then there's this is a cool <laughs> compartment. I don't really use it, but go check this one out, Stace. Yeah, I don't really like this. Is the only I one know that has that. this rad little micro uh, <laughs> storage zone, so it's it's kind of cool. It, it's just neat. The, the box, this thing is really well thought out. There's just so much space, and in a regular camper, this whole side on a truck bed would just be useless space. You couldn't do anything with it. So that was the whole thinking behind going with a utility bed, service bed, or this M1031 military bed was just was a perfect fit for us because it was taller. It meant I had to build less sides when I when I built the camper top. So, uh, so far this the whole thing's working out really good. Got a tarp up here and some bungee cords and different stuff that uh, we can use in place of an awning because we haven't bought an awning yet. But if you're the dude on Facebook Marketplace that has that radical South African awning, call me back, man. I've sent you a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of messages. You'll never see this, probably. <laughs> It was a good deal. I want that on him. <laughs> Down here, this is our diesel heater compartment. This is the intake for the diesel heater and the exhaust for the diesel heater. And these aren't inside the internal compartment. These are just 
shells and covers because when this goes on a military trailer, these remove and the, and the large fenders from the military trailer drop in place. So uh, I've had people worry that our intake and our exhaust are still inside the trailer, but this is just hollow back here. Um, and let me actually, you can see, it's really bad lighting, but that's the intake and exhaust setup. And here's my tube for the diesel, my pump, and it comes right up out of the fuel tank there. There's the diesel heater. Okay. But these things work great. We've only got one uh, outlet plumbed in right now, but we can camp, uh, typically burn maybe, maybe a gallon of diesel a night if we're running it pretty hard and it's, so it gets good, really good fuel mileage. Uh, I love these things, they work super good. It's dry heat too, you can dry out wet clothes and there's no condensation, you never smell diesel inside. And it's like the best, I think we paid 120 bucks for that one, it's super cheap and they just work really good. This side, solo stove, shovel, diesel heat, um, port. I can fill my, my fuel here and nobody can get to it. Axe is pretty important uh, for chopping through stuff and also chopping up our firewood. Yeah, solo stove. Uh, this will eventually get trimmed out and we're going to do a 12 volt fridge here that will be on a slide so we can pull it, get food and uh, beverages from inside the camper or slide it out and get to it from outside. I always like this stuff, it's cool. I'm gonna leave this on, this is old military. Uh... This equipment is not suppressed for electromagnetic interference. Do not operate within 100 feet of sensitive electronic communications and surveillance equipment. And this is just kind of a layout of how the camper was originally set up with all the military gear. There was a welder in here at one point, a generator and an air compressor, some other stuff. This is important, I know most of you guys know, but just, Keep a fire extinguisher handy, just in case you need to put your vehicle out or somebody else's. And these things work awesome too, just a really simple torch. You can get these for dirt cheap. And I've always run most of my accessories off of these little propane bottles because they don't take up much room. You can stash them all over and you can run a stove off of it. You can use these little torches on here if you're trying to heat fittings to break stuff free or to light the solo stove, uh, especially in the Northwest. It makes a big difference. It's raining right now and firewood is always, everything's just always wet here. You get a little help lighting your fire, it's, it's kind of nice. So those little torches are worth the 10 bucks that they cost. Other than that, this is kind of kind of the basic rundown of the camper box. All right. So this is the inside. Still got a lot of finishing work to do in here. Um, there's the there's the boat hatch we installed. We got some temporary lighting going on. Uh, insulating, more windows. We're going to do one over here. Our kitchen area is going to be right next to Stace up top. Uh, but for now, it's pretty cozy. It stays warm. Here's our diesel heater controls. There's the windows out the back. Looks like we're going to have some cabinetry on this side and cooking area and another roof vent up above. But it's all framed out to use inch and a half insulation. And a lot of these boxes are gonna also have holes cut with access to the side compartments from inside as well. All right, so I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna follow Stacy and she's gonna give the tour of the cab a couple things that she likes about the inside of the truck. This right here is the boost gauge for the turbo and we can hit like 30 to 40 PSI on that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> This one is the EGT gauge to keep an eye on the exhaust temps. I'm always telling Andy, gotta make keep, sure it under, you're keep it under, keep it under 1200. Yeah, yeah I well, know. You you're don't. always on my case about yeah. that one. So, this what kind button. of gauges do you got in there? <laughs> <laughs> Autometers. Autometers. <laughs> We've also got this AFC live, um, which is cool, so we can adjust our injection pump, the P pump, that just kind of sets it so we can run it a little bit richer if we want to get a lot extra power or, or tune it down slightly while we're driving. So this is a mechanical diesel, the 6BT, but that gives us a little bit of control over the um, over the injection. So this is the motor. This is our this is our Cummins thing has been absolutely awesome. My favorite diesel so far. I've owned a lot of diesel vehicles and they all have their benefits, but this one seems to do 
a lot of things right. It works really good and pretty economical, super easy to fix. Everything's just right out in the open. Alternator, turbo, exhaust manifold, injectors. When I put new injectors in this thing, it, it uh, took me about an hour, pretty fast. And that whole set turbo, I know we could probably run a bigger turbo on this truck, but it works really good. The thing still, we get decent boost out of it and it just they just last a long time. So I'm happy with that. We changed the oil a lot and I haven't had any problems with this motor. It's just, it thing's just bulletproof. What, which motor, which diesel do you prefer, Stace? Did you like the old Ford IDI with no turbo? I do miss it. Every time I hear one, yeah. I like look, I'm like, yeah, yeah that's pretty like good. Ford. So we got a pretty cool spot down here by the river. Uh, we took a wrong turn and ended up on the opposite side of the river and the bridge was washed out to go across. So we kind of just continued on and saw a bunch of dirt roads and trails and some people stuck. So we had to pull a car and a truck out at the same time because the chain was locked in between the two. But uh, we did it, we got them, got them out. It's nice to be able to help those people. Good work, Stace. <laughs> Get there. Hopefully you got the shot. We haven't looked at your footy yet. But anyway, take my word for it. It happened. We pulled two cars out at the same time. A Hummer, a Hummer and a Pontiac. That's this. Where are you going? Lake. Found a lake. <laughs> spot it. We saw it on the GPS and you could see it through the trees, so we're gonna go check it out. So we're coming through and there's an old uh, old stripped cedar pole here, but you can see what happened is this area, it's got this straight cut here and then it peels up uh, to a point. And so at one point, the natives uh, a Native American had cut this and stripped part of the bark all the way up for, for probably basket making. Um, that typically doesn't kill a tree. This tree probably just died naturally because it'll only take one strip and then the rest of the bark uh, is enough to keep the tree alive. But it's kind of interesting that this that somebody had been back here a long time ago to, to cut that bark and probably turn it into a basket. So here's another example of that. It's a long strip, but um, there's something making some really weird what noises down that? here too. <laughs> oh, you saw the thing that's making the yes, weird noise. It's like it's a back fat. behind the tree. <laughs> Which way did it go? It's up here? I don't know, it keeps buzzing by. That's like a big clump, brown 
insect. <laughs> it's <laughs> insect. big, plump, round insect. Yes, it, I've it never is. heard anything like that before. Neither have I, but it keeps flying by my face. I just there heard it goes again. again. Did you see it? No, but it's, I heard it behind me. What is that? I don't know. But it's definitely. Oh, it's a little fire pit. Oh, yeah, somebody's camped back here. It's a spot. Pretty neat. Okay, there hopefully hopefully that picked it up, but that thing is so <laughs> weird sounding. I don't know what it is. It's, it's okay. Uh, it sounds like a really big hummingbird. All right, we made it to the lake, but uh, we still haven't actually seen the mystery bug that's making the weird, the weird <laughs> sounds, but uh, let's check this lake out. So Stace just heard it again. It flew like right over the top of us. It was pretty loud. It was strange. There it is again. All right, I hope the thing picked it up. That was... Oh. I don't know. All right, we should head back up to the truck. <laughs> Get rolling, we got a lot to see still. This is like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Oh my God, this is so high up. It's really freaky. What are you doing? I'm going to try to fix a transmission leak. So one of our transmission lines just wore through, but I've got some tubing. And I'm gonna see if I can cut Rusty some. Up and uh, more fix it. This might work. Get this, this thing is on the road. Pretty good. Go. I've got some various different lengths of tubing here and size and diameter, so I'm gonna try to make a patch over the transmission leak point on there. So we'll see. It's worth a try. It's all we really got right now. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you can get it. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a temporary patch on the line. I've got some fuel hose that I think is gonna work. And uh, I'm gonna try to find some hose clamps. I'm gonna slice it down the middle, lock it on there. We're gonna find a spot to camp and I've got some, the right stuff, a 90 minute gasket maker. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna camp, set up camp. I'm gonna clean this off as best I possibly can and make another cap out of one of these pieces of tubing that'll slide over it with the gasket maker locked in around it and uh, and hopefully we can stop the leak or slow it down enough that we can keep our trip going and get home. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Did you ever think you'd be using this hand sanitizer to fix this problem? <laughs> hopefully it works. Great. All natural. Yeah. Oh, mosquito just went up my nose. <laughs> so yeah, right now the truck is curing. We, we put some of the stuff called the right stuff on it. It's pretty good sealant. So I, I cut some rubber uh, fuel lines down the center and then slid those over where the, where the leak was on, on the transmission line. And then in the process cut my finger down here on the metal bracket, but it's taped up and I, at least I was able to get my hands pretty clean, you know, <laughs> hand sanitizer. Coconut lemon yeah. hand sanitizer. Yeah. Now we're just uh, waiting for the truck to, for the, for the sealant to set up and keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully it works, uh, slows the leak at least. Might be awesome. We're going to go for a walk though and just kill some time. We found a cool trail here. Let's roll. <laughs> Check out all this, look at all this moss, That's pretty good. There it is, this might be our camp spot for tonight.